Welcome, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, and welcome to Our World of Darkness, where we, on Mondays, celebrate Metaplot Monday. Metaplot Monday is the day of the week that we decide to take a deep look in the overarching story that is the World of Darkness. Now, starting last week, I decided to take this into a new direction. I do plan on covering basic storyline uh, points, and I will definitely take any request that is, uh, that is put forward in the comments. But today, we're going to be discussing Theo Bell, the slave turned kindred. He's been fighting for freedom since his embrace, since before his embrace. He's an inspirational story. And he's also done with the Camarilla. For the longest time, for over a hundred years, Theobel has served the Camarilla loyally. He was embraced by a Camarilla dignitary. He was considered an oddity over time. He was... He was He was something of a sideshow. He sucked it up and he shook the hands of those who wanted to shake his hands and he bowed to those who wanted them to bow. He kept his cool and he was truly an inspiration when it came to the Bruja. He was self-control incarnate. Now, if you've never read anything up on Theo Bell, I do suggest reading the Fall of Atlanta series, the 13 clan novels of Vampire the Masquerade that was uh, that came out a few years ago. Um, also, you can just look up his biographies and things like that. You will see some very heart-wrenching details on this kindred's life. But what has happened to him since Vampire the Masquerade went 5th edition. Well, at the convention in Prague, I believe in 2012, everything changed. Not just for Theo Bell, not just for the Camarilla, but for the world of darkness in general. Now, unfortunately, there was no Bruja Justicar representing. He had been murdered by the gangrel warlord of the Camarilla, Karsh, who Theo staked and threw into the ocean. You see, it is a, uh, it's an honored tradition, a show of respect, when you arrive at one of these conclaves, that you are to bow to your superior clan members. Theo had no superior clan members. He was forced to bow to his employer, the Hardestown. Thea Bell had been working for Hardestadt for a long time. He had been his, his personal archon, handling the dirty work that the Venture didn't want to have his hands painted with. And there's really no telling what was in Theo Bell's head when he was told to bow to Hardestadt. But I think it was one last straw out of the years of servitude when he realized that he was still a slave in his own right and he killed the, found, the founder of the Camarilla. Theobel, in the middle of the conclave, executed his master. It had to have been freeing. 
And even those of us who tend to spend time being loyal to the Camarilla in our games can't help but wonder how it felt to be able to get rid of that bastard. Now, as he killed Hardestat, Jan Petersoon, Hardestat's child, the child of the Camarilla, the perfect Ventru, stood up in protest and died as well. Now, I haven't read much on the details of the Prague Conclave, and I do plan on getting into that because I think studying of the Prague Conclave may very well be the catalyst point for understanding how exactly you are meant to run Camarilla vs. Anarch games. Because after Theo Bell executed the founder, and Peter Zoon died shortly after. I don't know if it was by Bell's hand or Bruja who stood up and attacked and decided this was the call to action. This was the time to leave the Ivory Tower and leave them short. One of their strongest pillars. Take away their warriors. Take away their philosophers who don't get the credit that they deserve. Bell joined the Anarchs. Bell is now... The Anarch. To look to, to aspire to. Is that why the Anarch community has taken on a more Camarilla bend? I've, I've noticed over time, recently, that the Anarchs have... The Barons are acting like princes. Coterie leaders are acting more like primitives. It's a very interesting thing. They don't have the clan set up the same way. There are no heads of clan. But there's a lot more kissing of rings in the Anarch community than I've ever seen before. And I enjoy Anarch. It's really sad to see them lose that fire. Maybe they're just scared. But are they bowing down to what they think Theo Bell is going to expect from them? A Camarilla setting where they can fight for freedom. Where the freedom is really just a new type of praxis. I'm getting off point. And I'm thinking that we're looking at Metaplot Mondays for further ahead. But right now, let's see exactly what the Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition core book has to say about the lore sheet for Theo Pell, which, on, in my book, I understand some books are different because other lore sheets are implanted. Uh, I have page 383. Theo Bell, long seen as the Camarilla's loyal lapdog, Theo's recent defection to the Anarch movement triggered shockwaves still felt throughout the Camarilla domains. It was Theo Bell who served at the whims of the Ventru Hardestat and Jen Peterson for years. Even begrudgingly, taking up arms for the Sombra Marcus Fatal in recent years. It was also Theo Bell who fired the first shot at the Convention of Prague, ultimately causing Hardestet and Peterson's deaths. Kindred gossip these nights positioned Theo Bell as an unwilling messiah among the Anarchs. He desires no position of leadership. He just got sick of bending over for the Blue Bloods and snapped. His action compelled hundreds of Bruja to follow suit taking out the princes who long lorded over the forming Anarch Bastions alongside the Gangrel. Despite his notoriety, Theo Bell still acts as liais uh, liaison between high-status Camarilla and Anarchs for the sole reason that he brooks no shit at meetings. He short-circuits Sabat ambushes, quells any Anarch riots, and shuts down Camarilla extortion and coercion. As a mediator, Theo's judgment cannot be faulted. He does know all sides of the field now, do doesn't he? I mean, hell, he was even seen having a drink with Tally the Hound towards the end of the Atlantis trouble. This really is a major change for the world of darkness. We have an Archon. The Anarchs have an Archon. But 
why. Again, I don't think we'll ever know. Unless we actually get some diary of Theo Bell or something like that. I don't think we're ever actually going to know why he chose it. Did Marcus Fidel offer him something? Did the Emperor of Washington, D.C. offer him something? Did he just truly snap? Did, did, did Ventru's last words of Neil Boy finally set him off? I would blame him. He was seen as Hardestet's pet at the end of Hardestet's life, after So what do you get if you align yourself in this Theo Bell lore sheet? Because as we know, the lore sheets are a way for your character to be more intrinsic, uh, intrinsically involved in the, in the whole overarching story. It's a way for you to choose to have this part of the game be represented in your chronicle. As a player and as a storyteller, it's time to just team up and decide exactly how your game is going to go forward in relations to the meta plot. So, you get five options, just like all the other lore sheets. Depending on how many points you invest in a lore sheet, allows you to have a certain thing. They do not stack. If you buy, if you buy three, you do not get one, two, and three. You get the third. If you buy one, you get one. If you buy two, you get the second one, and that is it. Now, I will stop rambling on. I just like to point this out because this is a common point that I have faced since the introduction of lore sheets, and I'm sure other storytellers have this too. So, if you invest one of your background points into the Theo Bell lore sheet, you get Rebel Cell. You command a pack of rebellious mortals and fuel their fire with something that keeps them fighting. Perhaps you need, the, uh, perhaps you feed them Vitae, or maybe you embody their ideals. Either way, these rebels, a three-dot ally group equivalent, perform a single dangerous task for you without your presence before disbanding until the next story. You have a small group of domestic terrorists under your control. You have a gang or just you have a loyal group of people who are willing to do things for you that are probably not the most legal in the world. They will fight for everything. If you watch the LA by Night Chronicle um from World of Darkness, or the old one, the same things for Geek and Sundry and 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 such. Um, I can't help but wonder if Erica Ishii's Annabelle Bruja took that because of her origin story and the people that she has connected with in her line. I wonder if she's not associated with Theo Bell on that one, but I, I wonder if Rebel Cell might actually be something that she has attached to her sheet. So if you buy the second one, you get True Anarch. I was slightly amused by this one. You were an Anarch before Bell led an army of Camarilla Bruja into the Anarch movement, and you resent these tagalongs joining the Anarchs just as they grow popular. I was an Anarch before it was cool. This seems something interesting to... I can see some Bruja taking this, but I can see this being very heavy in the Ventru Torridor setup because of the whole I was Anarch before it was cool thing. You have records, names, places, and dates about who the rebels were and are fed to you by a man, by the man, or gathering, pers uh, gathering personally. Either way, you get two automatic ses successes on any investigation tests concerning vampires who defect to the Anarch movement. 
If you meet a new Anarch, you can basically do background checks on them and try to figure out where'd they come from. Are they actually Anarchs? Or are they just spies? Because that's something that is under consideration. Is Theo Bell truly turned against the Camarilla? Or is he spying on the Anarchs? Is he actually spying on them? He killed Marcus Fidel. You know, the still unliving emperor of Washington, D.C. Who's to say that this whole thing isn't a setup and Hardestet is still alive and Peter is still alive and they're using this as a way of infiltrating the Anarchs? It is up to you, if you take this, to find the truth if these turncoats are truly worth trusting or not. The third thing that you can buy in this is contact information. Whether by dead drop, messenger, or arcane means, you can get word to Theo. Whether he responds or even listens depends on the message you, uh, and your earlier interaction, but if he likes what you have to say, he might be able to move mountains. The precise game effects of the message to Theo are up to the storyteller. There are no true mechanics for that. But if you're not sending him dick pics and memes, you might actually be able to get him to help you for something. And that is a man who has a lot of pull in the Anarch community and still has allies in the Camarilla. That could be definitely be useful. Four points invested will get you Bell's Circle. Theo trusts you. Perhaps because of your earlier revolutionary actions or manipulating your way into his good graces, Bell is equivalent to a five-dot mala, but your association with him also has many drawbacks. I can understand that. I can understand that. You would be on the number one radar hit list for the Camarilla. They would want you dead. Definitely. You're an ally of somebody who turned against them. Or somebody who has two points in this might not trust Theo Bell and therefore might not trust you. That right there can give you so many amazing things. Direct contact with Theo Bell as a five point mala, a mentor who is willing to give you his experience and teach you things that he knows. I've seen his character sheet. That man has some great stuff, and I'm sure storytellers out there are going to update that to the V5 system uh, if they decide to bring him into a game. But think how much you could learn from someone who has been in the inner... who's been inner circle adjacent. He's not inner circle, but he has definitely been inner circle adjacent. Also, if you know him... Vampires are name droppers, as corny or as 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 rude as it is, as as tacky as it is. That's what I was thinking. Vampires will drop names, and I know Theo Bell can probably get you into a lot of circles. Now, sect neutrality. Five points. If you decide to invest five points into sect neutrality, following Theo Bell's lead, you have a small contingent of a few Bruja loyal to your vision and you can infu uh, you can influence them in any direction the Camarilla, the Anarchs or even to form smaller subsects neutral amidst the Jihad you may resent their existence and take pride in your following note mindless oh uh, sorry not mindless disciples these kindred keep track of favors granted but until they rebel against you you have five dots to spend among contacts haven safe houses mola and retainers 
you have a group of Bruja. Specifically Bruja. It does say Bruja. You have a group of Bruja who are willing to help you build a new foundation. This can be a new foundation of how you believe the Anarchs could to be. Like how they should be. Returning the Anarchs back to where they were. Where, where barons were people who had respect, not princes. They didn't act like princes. Or you could just want to start something all new. Maybe you feel like your inner circle knows enough to recreate the Sabbat. To build it in your own image. Bring the Sword of Pain to your hand. You've got a small army of Bruja to start with. Maybe Shovel Party is your name. Either way. Either way. As you can see, Theo Bell is intricate in both the Camarilla and the Anarch storyline. how much you choose to, if at all, to use him is is up to you, obviously, as storytellers and players. But with this lore sheet, you can just engross yourself in it. Again, that's up to you. I wouldn't want to waste this, especially if you're running a Camarilla or an Arcane. Which... I know that sounds redundant to say due to the fact that that seems to be our options, but I don't know. Five points in the Theobel lore sheet kind of says otherwise now, doesn't it? We can do things. We can step outside of the norm. Theo did. But with that, we've gone over Theobel. And unless anybody has any suggestions on specific storylines of any facet of the world of darkness not just vampire but maybe werewolf the apocalypse or changeling the dreaming or mage the ascension or any of the others i in fact just started reading heart of the forest and i'm enjoying the hell out of that story right now but if there are no suggestions uh, suggestions tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow next monday on next monday we'll be going over the canine heresy continuing along in the core book. With that, I am Voivode Maquette. This is Our World of Darkness. What are we doing with Our World of Darkness? I look forward to hearing from you. Please, like, subscribe, share if you have friends who you think this might be entertaining for them. And by all means, comment, because... I'm lonely here in our world of darkness.